We are gathered here today to worship you, God, and we just want to thank God for allowing us and giving us this opportunity that we can hear the word of God and share the word of God together. And uh, I believe that there is something that God wants us to hear this morning. Uh, the word of God says, um, I, I earn among you suffering. Let them offer prayers for healing. I earn among you cheerful. Let them sing and offer words of praise. Come, let us pray together, for the prayers of the faithful are powerful, are really powerful. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you in gratitude for all that you have done for us. We thank you for your many blessings. We do not pray as we if we are magicians, seeking a mysterious power. For we know you, God, through your Son, in him we raise to you all our concerns and know that you will deal with them. Bless us now as we gather before you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I will call my brother to come and do the reading of the word of God from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Brother Ben, please come. Praise God. And, uh, may his blessings be on you wherever you are in the world. And... Uh, um, just encourage you to keep looking towards him and uh, go back over some of Johnson's previous messages if you haven't seen them all and uh, watch them ones and then also include uh, watching those ones you really like because uh, we can, uh, God can show us uh, amazing things from other messages if we watch them more than once. So yeah, do that. So as Johnson mentioned, uh, we'll read from James 5, uh, 13 to 20. And it says here, the prayer of faith. So is any, anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make you the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death, and cover over a multitude of sins. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for this week and now uh, we'll get Johnson back to share his message. Uh, it's going to be, a, as always, an amazing message. So bring open ears. God bless. Uh, this, this morning I've decided to share with you on a theme, prayer, a way of life. Prayer, a way of life. Today we complete our journey through the book of James by looking at chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Here we find James urging us to pray when we are in trouble and sickness. Then he reminds us of the biblical connection between sickness and sin. He reinforces the concept of healing involving both the body and the soul. Prayer is vocal, but it also must be the action. It must be the way we live our daily lives. St. James, as he concludes his epistle, a letter based on action, that is being doers of the word, makes this point abundantly clear. So prayer, one's daily communication with God, is a staple of organized religion and central tenant to the Judeo-Christian tradition of which we are all members. In the Hebrew scriptures, there are numerous examples of various kinds of prayer that are used to invoke God to act. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 7, the Israelites asked Moses to save them. 
pray to the Lord to take the serpents from us. Most positively, Ezra calls the Hebrews to pray for the life of the king and his children in Ezra 6 verse 10. Jeremiah wrote to the Jews in exile telling them, pray to the Lord on its, the seat of Babylon, on its behalf. Jeremiah 29 verse 7. King Zedekiah asked Jeremiah, please pray for us to the Lord our God in Jeremiah 29 verse 7. So the books of Psalm is filled with prayers of praise to God. The psalmist writes, you who fear the Lord, praise him. And all your offspring to Jacob, glorify him. In Psalm 22, verse 23. So Psalms 148, familiar to men, begins, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highs. Praise him, all his angels. Moon, praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and your waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. So the New Testament is equally filled with references to the importance of prayer. It is clear that Jesus was a man of great prayer. It was the center of his life. Many times Jesus went off by himself to an isolated spot to pray to the Father. In Matthew 14 verse 23, in Mark 6 verse 46, in Luke 6 verse 12. Sometimes spending the whole evening in prayer, Jesus encouraged his friends to pray. So he took Peter, James, and John up on a mountain to pray. There he was transfigured before him. In Luke 9, verse 28 and 36. After the supper, Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray and told the same three apostles to pray as well. In Mark 14, verse 32 and 42. So when Jesus' hour had come, he prayed for those whom he had left behind. He never forgot his friends. In John 17, verse 1 to 26. Besides being a man of prayer, Jesus also instructed his, disciples, his followers on how to pray. He taught his disciples that prayer was a private matter. It was not to be used to make others think you are important. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and in the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Whenever you pray, go to your room and shut the door and pray to the Father in secret. That is in Matthew 5, verse 5 to 6. So Jesus went on to tell his friends, the multiplication of words was not important. Rather, a more simple approach is best. Then he told them the prayer, which for men, if not of all of us, was the first prayer we ever learned. And we always call it the Lord's Prayer. Jesus' disciples took his instruction on prayer and through their evangelistic zeal spread the practice to all the lands and the people. While it was clear from Jesus' practice, St. Paul, the apostles to the Gentile, made a completely fundamental tenet of prayer. In Ephesians 6 verse 18, pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all saints. So, in his letter to the Colossians, he put it this way, devote yourself to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. Colossians 4 verse 3. So, Paul, in essence, was telling his fledgling Christian communities that they must make prayer a way of life. Today, St. James makes this same important point. Since James' message in his epistle had been centered about action, it is totally appropriate that he closes his letter with an exhortation to make prayer in word and action, in a way of life. So James begins by speaking of the more traditional forms of vocal and mental prayer. He asks those who suffer and those who exalt to pray. One must pray in petition to God, and James says, such prayer will save the sick. So next, the apostle says, the cheerful should give praise and thanksgiving to God. We should never forget the source of our sustenance. James then moves to more, a more active understanding of prayer. He first says that we should pray for one another. We can verbalize or more mentally pray for our family and friends, but we can also act on their behalf. If prayer is communicating with God, there can be no better way than to demonstrate by action that one wishes or hopes for another. So James used the example of Elijah 
to demonstrate the power and effectiveness of prayer in word and in action. Clearly, James wants his readers to know and practice the idea that prayer is essential. It must become an integral part of our everyday life. So we must broaden our often narrow understanding of prayer to include an active response. So whenever you, whatever you are doing, is praying. So praying is part of your life. When people think of prayer, generally, as we have said, they are referring to a verb or mental communication with God. Certainly, this is the most common idea. We converse with God in five general ways. We do what is called petition. We go, do what is called intercession. We do what is prayer, pray, uh, prayer of praise, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of confession. Christians call upon in prayers of petition and intercession when they need something. You are petitioning to God. You are interceding for other people. You are standing in the gap praying for other people. We may pray for something in our personal lives, the lives of a family member or a friend, or more broadly for a group of people, a nation or even the world. We call upon God to intercede. We say with the psalmist, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. People must praise God daily. So we should wish to praise the one who has provided everything, who is the source of the goodness and peace we seek, and generally enjoy, and the one who challenges us to move forward and continue walking the Christian road towards holiness. When we gather in our churches, on Sunday morning we pray in a praise as a community, Many Christians find great fellowship through charismatic prayer of praise in spirit. There are some people who pray in spirit. They don't do organized prayer. You have, and I've entered in so many churches where you find that people maybe would be praying, maybe walking the aisle, people. There is nothing like saying, okay, can we pray for this? People just pray for themselves. And they say, sometimes they are praying in the spirit. So we must pray to God in thanksgiving. As a church, we have annuals, annually set aside the last Sunday in October to give thanks for the many blessings we share. Because God has given us a lot of things. There is prayer, prayer for thanksgiving. However, our daily prayer must be one of thanksgiving. Why are we thanking God? Because God is doing great things in our life every day. There are a lot of things that we see. Jesus was very disheartened when, after curing the ten lepers, only one, a Samaritan, returned to give thanks. Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Jesus is asking that question. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? In Luke chapter 17, verse 17 and 18. So our daily prayer must be one of thanksgiving. We seldom think to thank God for our lives, the beauty of the day, the creation, and even the challenges that come our way. Do we, at the end of the day, come to a point of saying, thank you, God? For what you've done to us. Sometimes we forget. We think we've done it by our own means. We think we've done it because of our own knowledge. But it is only God who intervenes in our situation. So we need to thank God almost daily or hourly in our lives of certain things. Sometimes you miss an accident. You, you end up saying, I was really lucky. Definitely I was going to have an accident. I was just lucky. I missed it by the corner. You were not lucky. You were saved by the grace of God. Last, we must also pray for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus specifically calls for this in the Lord's Prayer, and so does James today. We all are sinners and thus in need of God's healing touch. That's why he's talking about if there anyone who is not feeling well, confess your sins. So the issue of confession is very important when you are not feeling well. You need to know where you have been, what you have done, because sometimes it's sins that we have that blocks healing from us. We should never be too proud to admit that we are wrong and we failed. We must not forget Jesus exalted the publican who could not raise his eyes to God, but had the courage to beat his breast and say, God be merciful to me, I am a sinner. In Luke 18 verse 18. So, while we generally think of prayer as a mental or verbal exercise, such a view is far too narrow. We must see our lives as a prayer. Our lives should be a prayer. For a Christian, your life is a prayer. And you, when your life becomes a prayer, it's difficult for you to enter into sin because your life is prayer. You are praying every time. 
You are praying all the time. If you prayer is communicating with God, all the time we do and say, even think is a prayer. Thus our lives of action must echo the fourfold process of mental and verbal prayer. So everything that we do is prayer. Just by walking to the shops, you'll be praying. <laughs> by talking to someone, you'll be praying. So if your life is a life of prayer, then it's difficult for you to easily enter into sin. If we petition God to act for ourselves or others, we are willing to act as well. We cannot passively stand still as the world races by. That is precisely the problem that many Christians have. No one is willing to take responsibility. Nobody wants to act. We want to pray for the poor, but nobody wants to help the poor. Because prayer is action. If you are praying for the poor in the community, you need now to see how best you can help the poor. It's not only that to pray to God and say, God, there are poor in our communities. Can you do something? It's you who should take the action. If you want God to act for us, we must be willing to act, to do our share, to lift our portion of the Lord. So God will always do God's part, but too often we expect God to do it alone. We don't want to participate. The Lord has given each of us many challenges and opportunities. We should not disappoint him because God has given us all these things. Sometimes we call upon God to intercede, to act of justice and righteousness for others. We pray for God to intercede, but what we are will and we are not willing to do. But intercession can we, through intercession, can we do something? Can we march for justice and human rights? Can we stand in solidarity with the poor and marginalized people in the world? I think of Mother Teresa. When she thought of going to live with the poor people, it's not an easy thing for a lot of people. Can we love our elected officials to act for others? Can we work to change the things and make our world a better place? We might not be able to effect a systematic change, but a powerful call to action challenges us. Think globally and act locally. We hear of something that is happening somewhere. And then you act to say, what can we do to help the problem which is happening somewhere? If we truly wish to praise God, how do we show it? How is it manifest? If you wish to praise God, we should not be more actively involved in our church. The Christian community that binds us together as a family, namely the people of God, are willing to challenge others in the Christian duty to praise God. Do we praise God by standing for what we know is right? That is what God says and not the world. Do we praise God and standing in for those things? We must thank God with actions as well. It is very easy to say thank you, but much harder to get out of our way in some gesture of thanksgiving. When God acts as we hope, we often give thanks and praise in return. But does our thanksgiving end with a word and a nod of the head? What can we actively do to demonstrate our thanks? What can we do to say thank you? To appreciate what God is doing to us? Writing a thank you note to God is a start, but we can do better. We must actively work on God's behalf in our world. Do we consider giving thanks to God when the response we receive from our prayer or petition intercession is not what we expect or does not come in the timely manner we want even to demand? Do we only give thanks for positive results? Is it possible to give thanks to God under this and under, under, under expected circumstances that we are in, confident that God's answer may be the proper one after all. Can we say thank you, God, even during this COVID time? Is there something positive you see and able to say thank you, God, even during these hard times, difficult times, unexpected times? Are we able to say thank you, God? There is a way of saying thank you is also found in the cut expression, I'm sorry. When you are able to say thank you, that person in most cases is able also even to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Although it may take some courage to express sorrow and admit guilt, can we do some more? What can we do to demonstrate contrition to others for the ways we have hurt them? If we have wronged another person, can we make amends and say we are sorry? 
because we want things to go well. If we have failed someone by omission, can we work harder to assist their needs in the future? Can we show God that we have turned over a new leaf, a new chapter in our lives, realizing that we have done wrong? Can we demonstrate clearly and forcefully a better way to live when we realize that we have done something wrong? Jesus' whole life, every word and action was a prayer. There was no long time he was not praying. His whole life was prayer. Everything on the cross, every Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Father, in your hands I put my spirit. Everything that he was doing, it was prayer. It was prayer. St. James today presents us with the message to make our lives a prayer. Our lives should be a prayer. Are we affecting other people through our prayers that we are doing? That's why I find that when you find when people do certain things, you ask yourself, who am I? So when you know who you are, you don't give a negative response always. You're always being polite, humble, because your life is a prayer. The apostle Smith is consistent with the war of his epistle. We need to be doers of the word and not simply listen. We are challenged to transform every action of our lives into a prayer. Communicating to God our desire to be his disciples. Let us therefore resolve today to be doers. Active doers. Active participants in God's life. The game is not won by sitting on the sidelines. We must actively participate. Let us do so by living our lives as a prayer that we all build the kingdom of God today and each day of our lives. That's why you are there as someone who stands in the need of those who need prayer. You stand in the gap for those who need prayer every time. Why? Because you are an elder in God's sight. Because the Bible says, call elders. It means we can only call elders maybe when we are in the church setup. But here I refer to you because you are a seasoned Christian. You are a Christian. You are an elder. Pray for others. Pray for others. When you meet people struggling in the street, pray for them. And not only pray for them, but also act to support their needs. What is their need? You can't just pray for someone who needs a transport to go to the hospital and then you just pray. If you have got transport, you pray for them and then you take them to the hospital. <laughs> Prayer and action goes together. You can't just pray for someone who needs food and just say, God will feed you. You pray and you look for food to give to the person. So we need prayers that are accompanied by actions, not just prayers on their own. So as a child of God, it is your responsibility, it is your task to pray for others and also a responsibility to act on God's behalf. You are somebody sent by God to do whatever you are doing because your life is a way of prayer. Your life on its own, it shows that you are just a praying saint. Whatever you are doing, may God bless you. Realizing the call that is in you, that you have been called to pray for others. You have been called to pray for everyone. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything. We thank you that you have called us to this life, which is a life that is a life of prayer. When we meet people who are challenged by different needs, circumstances, illnesses, and they need us to pray for them. And when we pray, it is only God who can answer our prayers. It is only God who is able to heal. It is only God 
who is able to do that which we cannot do. Thank you, Father, for giving us the gift of prayer. Thank you for the comfort and joy that it brings, for the loneliness it fights, and for the courage and det determination it gives. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. Thank you for the times we have been granted our heart's desire, for the times we have not, when we have to learn that our ways are not your ways. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of prayer, which is so powerful. Without prayer, we can't please God. Without prayer, we can't live a Christian life. Without prayer, we are just dying. Father, help us. Help us to know that we need to pray every time. As I pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, bring healing to those who are not feeling well. Bring comfort to those who are lonely, depressed, challenged by different things. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll ask you, brothers and sisters, to take your offerings right now, and then I'll pray for the offerings. And uh, we've realized that it is always good to give thanks to God for the life that you live. Um, I, I, I always want to even challenge my life to say every day of my life, I need to take a stop and say, what are the things that I need to change, thank God about? Maybe after every hour, after two hours, after even a day, one week, you need to look back and say, what are the things that I need to thank God about? And when you realize all those things, you always are pushed, aged, to say, I need to say thank you, God. So let us pray for the offerings, thanksgiving offering. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we want to say thank you. We thank you for the things that you have done for us. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that we are here because you love us. Praise God, Father. Praise you, Father. As we bring these gifts in your hands, may you multiply them so that they can be used in your kingdom. Bless every hand that has managed to realize that we need to offer thanksgiving every day of our life, every week. In Jesus' name I pray. Let Amen. us receive grace. Loving God, we have come before you and we want to say thank you. Thank you for helping us through this week. Thank you for the people we have met. Thank you for we know now ask your blessings to help us love everyone we meet, especially those who are in difficult circumstances. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.